What's up guys, yet again back with another tech review video. Today we're looking at the EVGA XR1 Pro capture card. Now if you go back to my older video, you'll find that I reviewed the XR1 light capture card. This was on Amazon for about $100 and recorded footage at 1080p 60. My opinions on the capture card were pretty positive. The price wasn't crazy, it did 4K pass through, and it was an overall good introductory capture card. Since I posted that video, one of my viewers actually commented and mentioned that eBay has more realistic prices for capture cards and that the pro version of the XR1 is $99 as well. So I was like, damn. Now I gotta get that one too. So shout out to Mad Hatterney 002 I appreciate the heads up. I ordered the XR1 Pro, it arrived within a week, and here are my thoughts on it. So overall, the difference between the XR1 Lite and Pro is that the Pro has more features. It has a microphone pass-through that makes recording game chat easier, it has a physical knob at the top that can be used to adjust volume settings, and also has RGB. I mean, we consider that a feature, right? The real important distinguishing factor and the one thing that made me want to get this capture card over the light is that it records up to 1440p60 or 4k30. This is leagues above the light, which tops out at 1080p60. Again, it's not necessary, but in this new generation of more intense games and graphical advancements, I think it's nice if I can show you exactly what I'm seeing in game. Apart from the capture improvements, the Pro also does 1440p 144 or 4K 60 HDR pass through. All that pass through means is what will be displayed on the monitor as I play and capture at the previously mentioned settings. Again, a lot of numbers, so the main point is it has more customization and it's a device that aids in future proofing. Both of these devices are easy to set up. They're literally plug and play into OBS. The Lite was my first ever capture card to set up and the Pro had little to no extra steps. If anything, you'll go into the OBS settings to tweak how you want things captured resolution wise. And then you might have to adjust the recording window to fit that resolution. All very easy things to do. I wanted to pick a next-gen title to show. You'll see footage from Forza Horizon 5 played on the Xbox Series X. I recorded half of the race on the light and the other half on the Pro. Then I also did some side-by-side -side comparisons. To me, the XR1 Pro looks sharper and really gives these recordings the next-gen polish that they have Well, most of the games. I will also add that the Pro does variable refresh rate support. VRR is essentially a setting that allows your monitor to adjust its hertz or frames to accurately display what a game system is pushing out. Ideally, if a game can run at 60 FPS, it'll be a steady 60. That's not always the case, and it can dip at times. VRR just helps the gamer not notice these dips. The XR1 Pro comes with this feature, and I've honestly heard mixed reviews on it. Mine was off by default, and I plan on keeping it off, because my frames will never go under 60 for a game that I'm running at 120. I can see how having it on might cause issues since your monitor is displaying one thing but the capture card is capturing another thing, almost like it's getting confused in translation. But at the end of the day, VRR support is a nice feature to have, but it is not necessary.
right guys this was my quick and honest review of the evga xr1 pro let me know down in the comments what you think do you think the pro is worth hundred dollars are there any other games you'd like to see me capture on this pretty dope device i appreciate each and every one of you watching please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel or don't i don't control you see you guys